Now that we have a GLM where we've estimated an individual beta for each trial in a given condition, we can go ahead and run a beta series analysis within a specified ROI and the rest of the brain. In this case, it's a very simple example. I've had the participants just, you know, they've made left button presses, right button presses. Let's say I'm interested in the beta series for left button presses for some reason. Uh, this isn't really going to tell you that much, but it's still kind of an interesting thing to do. It's a good place to start from. Now, let's say that we had uh, 29 occurrences of them pressing with their left hand. So we have, correspondingly, 29 individual betas. And we can string all those together, see where they correlate in the rest of the brain. So first, let me show you I, this, let's say, uh, mask that I created, this ROI that I'm looking in. Let's say we're looking in the right... M1. Okay, so this is something I created. It was actually a functional contrast, left minus right, from uh, the same GLM before I broke it apart into a beta series analysis. So if we overlay this on a template brain, you would see this is pretty much, you know, most of the, the, the right motor cortex. So this is where we're going to be looking for the betas, okay, the beta series, and then correlating that with the rest of the brain. Uh, the actual function which does this is called do beta series. Uh, this is something I just kind of cobbled together. And I, I just want to make clear, I, I've used a lot of code. It's almost outright plagiarism, but I used a lot of code from a former postdoc in my lab, Derek Nee. Uh, very, very good scientist, extremely uh, capable coder, and you know, did, did a lot of really good stuff. So I don't want to take too much credit for this. A lot of this is really his work. I just repackaged it to make it a, a single function. So what this will require is basically a, a few different strings telling you, you know, where is where are all the subjects located, what subjects do you want to loop this over, and where is the directory that contains their spm.mat file that has these individual betas. Uh, you also specify a seed ROI, the conditions, and the map names. Okay, So a lot of this should be in the help, but if you want several conditions and if you want to average across a couple conditions for their beta series, you can do that. Just make sure they're in their each individual cell. And the map names will just put an output for each of those different conditions. Okay? So, um, and I'll post this code on the blog. I also have a, a .m file you can download from my website. So if I do this, do beta series, uh, note that I already have a lot of these things in variables. So root dir is, you know, data it's just a path to this directory which contains all of my subjects. So if I actually looked in there, not to digress too much, but if I just looked in there, you would find uh, all of my subjects in this study there were 22. So they're all listed in here. Okay. Uh, the next thing is subjects. So how many subjects do I want to loop over? And I could make this uh, a bunch of people. I could make this a 204, 205, 206. I could make this everybody as long as they're enclosed in brackets. But for now we're just going to do it for one subject. And lastly, spmdir is where it points towards the spm.mat, which has all the individual betas estimated for a specific condition. So uh, notice, you know, within one of these um, subjects, we have model beta coral. That's where the spm.mat file is located. It has a bunch of betas. So a ton of betas. In this case, I actually did an individual beta for each trial of each condition. You don't need to do it for each condition, you can just do it for each uh, trial, each occurrence in the, the condition that you're interested in, and then model the rest of them uh, normally. But anyway, so, so that's where everything is pointing towards. Uh, seed ROI, that points towards where my mask is located, and then cons and map name, map names, those just say, uh, what is the name of the regressor? Remember, the way that this is set up assumes that you have every instance of this regressor labeled as the regressor, then an underscore, and then the occurrence or the trial number. So in this case, there would be respond left underscore 1, respond left underscore 2, all the way up until respond left underscore 29. And then map names is the output. Okay, it's going to generate a, an R map and also a Z map that's been normalized. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So let's just do do beta series, and you know I have these on variables. You could type this all out if you wanted to, but this just makes it a lot quicker. So Richter subjects spmdir, and then we also have our seed ROI, cons, and map names. So I'm going to go ahead and run that, 
uh, it goes into that directory, loads the SPM, and performs a beta series. So it basically goes through every individual slice and correlates that beta series with every other uh, beta series in every other voxel. Okay, great. So we have this, and now we know we have respond left, right on one dot z. So we can go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, probably best to do that in something like MRI cron, which makes it a little bit easier to visualize. Okay, so remember these are z scores, and it's only for left responses. I'm not, you know, this isn't terribly interesting. I don't know how much you're going to get out of this, but just to just to see, we can threshold this by looking only at things which, which are above, say, you know, two or three point five. Uh, Z scores, threshold it a little bit. Uh, you see some contralateral stuff, and you also see some significant correlations in some of the, the caudal cingulate zone right here. So, what to make of it? That, that's really up to you. Again, you would probably do something more interesting, but that is how you do it. And if you have several people, then you could just take all these individual Z maps and put them into a second level GLM, do a, a one sample t test, or you could compare beta maps against each other and do that as well. Uh, the the options are really endless. So uh, that's how you do beta series analysis in SPM. Uh, again, the code is on the blog. I'll have a link below. Also, a .m file is on my website. So I hope it helps. If you guys find any bugs, any issues, please let me know. But I hope this this helps people do beta series analysis in in SPM if uh, you know they don't want to do it in Apne. Okay. Very good, and I'll see you guys next time.